Hi, it's Saturday, and I wanted to first apologize for forwarding something that I trusted and had not personally checked out. I won't be doing that again. That's first and foremost. There's fake news on every side. Everyone is so vigilant about what they believe when it comes to this invasion through a needle on our body, when it comes to defense of that, thinking it is helpful. People do whatever you are convicted in your heart to do. There's a scripture that says, let you be, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. I am persuaded not because of the news stations, not because of people telling me things, but because I am prone to investigative research. Not only did I learn to do that in school, I learned to do that in work and became proficient at investigating things for specific topics. I needed to understand the facts, the laws, and so on to implement certain projects. So it is my natural curiosity and unfortunately a deep mistrust when I have seen inconsistencies to the level that we are all, all seeing. I watched a doctor last week do an experiment on Facebook. There was no cut in the footage. So do I trust my eyes? I'm about 98% there on that. He took several masks. And you know how you take your glasses, your eyeglasses, and you go, and then you clean them. He did that without the mask and showed. And then he put on a couple of masks, a couple. And through the mask, and still got fog on those glasses. Wow. Do what you will. But something's very wrong here on so many levels. Blind trust is what got us in this situation. This so-called government body above us at this point is tyrannical at least, at the least. You're telling millions of people, millions under the guise of health, when there's still a 99% cure rate here. I've got several family members who have had it. I had it. I also know several people, know of several people. I don't know them personally, who have passed away from this. I am not insensitive to the reality of what's going on out here. Let's just be very clear on that. Anything but. This is very real. But it's been used as a bioweapon. It's been used to birth fear and bring control, the likes of which I've never seen in my life. And the world at large is being held hostage by something that has a cure rate. El Salvador is giving packages to each of the family members of someone who gets diagnosed or is hospitalized. And in that package are not only the masks, but there is the drug Ivermectin, not the animal formulation of Ivermectin, which is what you're seeing on the news them talk about. Would people please wake up? Would you please change the channel, at least get a different channel? They're all liars, every one of them. How you possibly can trust this is beyond my comprehension. However, we were given a brain, we were given discernment, and we have an opportunity to wake up to not only what's going on around us, but to realize because of what's going on around us, there are powers at play, but the most important power we have to realize is that there's a spiritual world, there's a communication system that is air waves. The scripture says that Satan is the prince and power of the air. Now, let's not give him more power than do him, though he has much. The Bible also says, 
marvel not for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. That he has the ability and what's going to be happening in the future has the ability to deceive even the very elect, the very elect people that believe in Jesus Christ. Us, the conspiracy nuts, or the people that believe in Jesus but we're still going to trust the world. All of us. That the powers out here that the deception is so great the scripture God Almighty ensured was inspired and written to us says that even the very elect would be deceived if it were possible if it were possible what will make it not be possible you don't have to believe in Noah's Ark you don't have to believe anything doesn't make it not true the Mount Ararat in Turkey. Google it. Google what's frozen underneath on a mountain in Turkey that has been prohibited from being excavated. Google the wood that was used to make that thing because they have dug down and gotten enough chips of wood. It's gopher wood. It's not even native to the area. Well, if something the size of a football field was built if indeed the flood did happen and the sediments of the earth and the rock prove it they're not going to tell you that you see if somebody doesn't want you to know something they've got to come up with other things and science can actually verify the things they've come up with but the backdrop reason isn't being exposed that's another issue meanwhile there's an enemy. Deception is all around you and you know it. You really do know it. You really do know it. But you're afraid. It's scary. It is scary. Faith in Jesus Christ. In his death, burial, more resurrection. He's not dead. He showed you something. He showed us something. There's a spiritual world. What's going on around us is a spiritual war, and we're dead center middle of it. Think about the things I've said. Think about the various different things going on in this earth, going on in our life, going on in this country. This country is free. Satan hates freedom. He's the author of confusion. He says that he came to seek, kill, and destroy. He's the author of confusion. If this isn't confusion, my friends, nothing is. Let's realize there is hope in the power of the name of Jesus Christ and in the blood of Jesus Christ that's spilt on this earth. There were resurrections at his resurrection. The Bible says, as you've seen him go, he will come again. Now they're talking UFOs. Finally, they're admitting things, flying things out there. They have found bigger galaxies than ever known possible. We're still continuing to uncover from a human perspective what's going on and what was told to us in that living book called the Bible. It's all in there. If you can't understand it, the reason you can't understand it is the Bible says it is a spiritually discerned book. It's alive. The book is alive. The book is a living entity. It is the mind of Christ who is the creator prior to taking on the form of man. There is so much. Start in the Gospel of John. Pray before you read. Anybody wants to contact me ever, we'll talk. I'll give you tips or hints on where to go, where to read. We are in the age of grace. We are not in the Old Testament. We are not in the Gospels. That is all written for our reproof, for our education. We are in the age of grace. We are in the end times. It doesn't mean it's happening tomorrow. It also doesn't mean it's not. There is a window of time and there will be a taking away. Thessalonians says that. For the dead in Christ will rise and those which are alive and remain shall meet up together with them in the air something's coming down the pike the bible says so the world is getting ready for it you're seeing this stuff on the news my friends 
you know, your heart knows. Get religion out of your head. It's confusing. It's not about religion. It's not about flying angels. It's not about the stuff you've been taught. It's a deception. Christ is alive and well. That book is alive and God is waiting for you to open your heart and call out to him and say, Lord, help me understand. Help me understand, Father. Help my unbelief. It's not of works of righteousness which we have done, but by his mercy he has saved us. There's nothing you're going to be able to do. You're a sinner. I'm a sinner. We're filthy. We're disgusting. We're wretched. We can't walk five feet without sinning. That's just who we are. He knows that. He created us. Something changed. And we now are subject to death. That was never the original plan. But maybe it was always the original plan because he knew us from the beginning. Bottom line, you need to get saved if you're not saved. If you are saved, it's time to stop listening to the world's message. We need to understand what's happening. Don't misunderstand me. But we need to think. We've got to stop dividing amongst ourselves as Christians. I make a specific stand on where I am for me. I'm not going to judge you on where you are. Unless, unless, from a spiritual perspective, you're going against the word of God. And then I am bound to judge you. The scripture says to do that. But judge you in a way where I am prone to pray and try to bring things to the surface. Nothing more. I love you dearly. I love you dearly. I pray something here lands somewhere that encourages you, that opens up your eyes, and that you can realize whether it's going to happen around us or it's going to happen to us, it's going to end at some point. Where will you be? Really, where will you be? Not you hope you're right. Do you know? Do you know? You can know. The scripture says, These things I have written that ye may believe in the name of Jesus Christ, that you can know. Praying for this message. Have a great weekend. Love you.